by the score, it looks like it's closer than it should have been. Because the way this team played, it should have been worse. And there's nothing really good to say about this game at all. So with that said, let's do a review. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Drew, better known as RockChuck01. And today, yesterday, whenever you're watching this, the 24th ranked Kansas Jayhawks headed down to Austin, Texas to take on the third ranked Texas Longhorns and lost comfortably to Texas by a final score of 40 to 14. Yep, what to say about this game? Uh, for starters, it should have been 10 times worse. The way Texas moved the ball in this game, they should have easily beat KU by 40 plus. But miscues and missed opportunities to put points on the board really hurt them. And yeah, we got bailed, but not a lot. Now, before I do get started, Fair warning, I'm playing semi-injured here as I am coming off of a sore throat, but I'm going to do my best here. So yeah, although there were some good things, there was a ton of things that we need to fix and fix fast. So with that being said, for those of you who do not know, I give positives and negatives about the game. I give a player the game and a player who needs to improve. Without further ado, let's do it. Not very many positives in this game, I gotta say, but one of them that is gonna be a push is turnovers, as both Texas and Kansas finished with the same number of turnovers in this game, as both teams had one. KU had a fumble, and Texas had an interception. Now, going to that fumble, ugh, it was the stupidest fumble in all of mankind, because that shouldn't have happened. Now, going through the play itself, it was a triple option play, and immediately it was going to be that High Shot was not going to get this ball whatsoever. They were going to pitch it wide. I think it was Devin Neal who was going to get it and try and get the first down. Well, High Shot didn't let go of the ball, and it ended up being a fumble that he just flipped forward, and ultimately it ended up in Texas's hands. And I think they ended up capitalizing on it. So, yeah. Dumb. But to back it all up, they did force Quinn Ewers to throw an interception at the end of the half. Which, oh, that was his first turnover of the season. So, we do have that little point there. That we are the only team to force a turnover so far this season out of Quinn Ewers. So, yeah. Tying the turnover battle, I'm going to call that a push positive. And the final positive, surprisingly the final positive, KU won the penalty battle, which makes zero sense. But I will take it. KU only had three penalties for 20 yards, while Texas was called for four penalties, and it cost him 34 yards. Now, I can't remember what penalties we had. I'm pretty sure one of them was a delay of game penalty, another was a holding call, and I can't remember. Maybe a false start. I don't know. So, yeah. Winning the penalty battle is somehow, some way, a positive. And with all that said, those are my positives. Okay, here we go. The negatives. Where to start? KU not doing anything with the ball and Texas running all over the place. That's just bad. Let's just start with the yard situation. This was without a doubt... KU's worst offensive yardage game and defensive yardage game by far because we couldn't move the ball to save our lives and Texas just ran all over the field and somehow didn't score very much off of them but they still managed to score. Texas outgained KU in this game 661 to 260 which includes beating KU in the passing game, 325 to 136, and the run game, 336 to 124. Not gonna lie, Texas found every stinking weakness in this KU defense, in this KU offense, and played to almost near perfection. So yeah, losing the yardage game, that's definitely a negative. Converting, or let me rephrase it, 
not converting on any sort of down whatsoever really hurt KU and then giving up a ton of first downs, giving up third down conversions, giving up fourth down conversions, it killed KU. Let's just start with KU on the offensive side of the ball. KU only had 11 first downs in the game. Third down conversions, they didn't convert at all. 0 for 8. And don't get me started on fourth downs because they didn't convert on that down either. They were 0 for 2. And to add insult to injury, allowing Texas to convert made things worse. Texas had 33 first downs in this game and converted on third down and fourth down efficiently throughout the game. Third down, they were 9 of 15. That's over 60%, I believe. And then fourth down, perfect. Two for two. Which, ugh. Those drives that they ended up going for it on fourth down just killed us. So yeah, we just got to do better making sure that we can stop a team. Because if that is not the case, we are going to get ran all over the place. And we will lose a ton of games maybe lose out if that's the case so yeah allowing texas to convert on any given play that's a negative too and the final negatives are nitpicks as texas had more total plays and time of possession than ku by almost double in both categories let me explain so let's start with total plays texas had 86 plays in the game Kansas only had 46. That's nearly double the amount of plays. And now time of possession, that actually is over double of KU's time of possession. KU's time of possession was 18 minutes and 27 seconds. Texas had the ball for nearly 40 minutes, 39 minutes and 41 seconds. Mm. The fact that they held onto the ball for that long it just says that they have the chance to go a lot of places. And who knows? They might end up going to the college football playoff. But, man, we got to take better care of the ball. And we need to have lengthy drives and make sure that they don't. Simple and to the point. So, yeah, having Texas run all over the place and have almost double the amount of plays and over double the amount of time of possession, that's a negative. So, with all that said... Those are my negatives. Player of the game. Not very many options in this one, but one guy stood out from the rest, and the player of the game is Trevor Wilson. He had one catch for 58 yards, and he took that to the house. So, yeah, even though he had the one big play, I think it was still good enough to get the player of the game nod. Uh, hopefully, he can continue that momentum going into the next couple of weeks. And... You know, we might end up seeing him get over 100 yards a game in terms of receiving yards if he ends up getting the ball. If he gets the ball, good things might happen. So, yeah, with that said, I'm going to give Trevor Wilson my player of the game. Player who needs to improve. This should not come as a surprise. Jason B. He was announced the starter 15 minutes before the game and all hell broke loose once he stepped foot on that field and not in a good way bean looked lost every time he touched the ball there was some spectacular things he did but for the most part he just looked so dumbfounded that honestly if we had jalen daniels in the game things might have been different Stat-wise, Jason Bean, 9 to 21 for 136 yards, a touchdown, no interceptions, and also had seven carries for 42, which that makes no sense. He also fumbled once in this game, but it ended up going to KU's favor as Daniel Highshaw picked it up for a touchdown, which I don't know how that happened because Highshaw's a little butterfingers in this game as well. But overall, Bean did not have a good game, especially when it came to throwing. 9 to 21. That's a little over 35% completion percentage. That's bad. But he just could not find the accuracy to save himself. There was times that guys would be open 
and he'd throw to a receiver in double coverage. And a couple of the plays where he had wide open receivers, they ended up dropping it, which makes, ugh, it just makes me envious of, I should have been out there making those catches. But there was other throws he had where he would have a guy open and he would just overthrow him and lead him just a little bit too much. And if he would have just had the accuracy, this game probably would have been a lot closer and you know, good things probably would have came out with this game where we would be talking about, yeah, we hung it in there with the third ranked team, even though we ended up losing, we hung in there through four quarters and made it a good game. So if Jalen Daniels is healthy, there's a good chance he's going to play next Saturday. But confidence and accuracy for Jason Bean is dire for him to improve. And hopefully that happens. But unfortunately for him, he is my player who needs to improve. So yeah, with that said, my player of the game is Trevor Wilson. Player who needs to improve, Jason Bean. Now, before I go, I do have a top play. Even though we lost, there was one good thing that came out of it. And it was the 58 yard touchdown pass from Jason Bean to Trevor Wilson, which ended up making the game a lot closer in the third quarter as Texas just scored to go up 20 to seven. But can you answer right back with this incredible throw and catch to pull within six, so. Here's that play. Although it doesn't look miraculous in the long run, at the time it was probably KU's biggest play of the game and it gave us hope that we could keep this game close. So yeah, congratulations to Trevor Wilson. You have my top play. And that is going to do it for my review of KU versus Texas. Again, the final score, Texas 40, Kansas 14. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and push that notification bell, and tell your friends about these videos. And I should see you again for the next football review, as the Hawks will return home to David Booth, Kansas Memorial Stadium, to take on a new conference opponent in UCF, which they ended up losing by one after giving up 20 plus points to Baylor. So both teams are coming off losses. It should be an impressive game. Plus it's in mid afternoon. So until then, have a good day. Never ever bring exotic dancers to the field house and I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.